so next up it's uh, Louise. So I'll give you presenter rights, Louise. Thank you. Um, I just need to move this back a little. Oh, there we go. And I understand your bandwidth may not be um, you know, that strong, so you you won't be sharing your camera, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Okay, well, I'll hand it over to you. So this is Louise Carr from Haddo College. Wow, um, tough act to follow. <laughs> that was, um, so I'm Louise Carr, I'm an advanced learning at the college as well as a teaching role. I work as part of advanced learning practitioners and teaching and learning coaches. And we support curriculum colleagues to explore the pedagogy of assessment. Many of our colleagues are new to teaching, having come in vocational settings. So Mahara has been established for assessment, uh, especially on our HE courses, but this attempt to take it in a slightly different direction without our mini project, which began around the time in England were closing and uh, teaching learning in a distanced activities. Uh, I'm going to start with the take you through the plan, the process, the page, the pro the prognosis. Um, and if you've got anything to add to that at the end, I'd be very grateful. So um, if I go to the premise, to begin with, just to set the context a little bit, our team of advanced work across two colleges in Kent, which are about four months. One's a general further education college and the other is a land-based college. Uh, it was clear on that our usual practices of one-to-one -one meetings, development, based support would have to be rethought and projects and priorities became mainly irrelevant. We also recognised that our cross-college role faculty teams put us in a bit of a unique position. What we did know was that the circumstances did changing rapidly and particularly in the years of the lockdown, they were quite fluid and dynamic. It became clear that the distance was isolating and at the same time by tens of daily emails offering webinars and help, which um, I recognised in Christina's keynote, the points that she was making as well. So what was So the plan, um, as we talked to different faculties, course groups across the colleges, we realised that certain themes and topics with several tools, resources, activities and platforms. Uh, the favourite resources our teachers and students appeared to be, be um, it appeared to be a response to the familiarity of team expertise and previous training. So with this knowledge, uh, we turned to a resource that very familiar with. On Moodle, we had a site called Hub that we'd already been using um, as development and professional learning. Staff knew where to find this accessible across both colleges. Um, and had previously been um, putting team projects known as onto this uh, professional learning hub on Moodle. And it was all of the um, ALPs in the team. Accessible and interactive, we created an area called the Collaborative and added forums, special interest areas, Padlet boards, word of mouth in our meetings, um, right across the fact that our coaches to pass it on as well. And one point we was that despite attempting to theme the Padlet posts, they were naturally and erratic. Not everybody knew when a new post had by the editors. So we decided to create a weekly bullet theme of the week something that was generating particular uh, at that time and then share it college-wide. be easy to distribute um, as in a few clicks as possible and I suggested Mahara as it was collaborative to compile and it would support different media posts um, and Mahara user in the group it was my job to create create the first page. So this is that I went through. I'm not sure how clear that's coming out, but it was basic images. So these three pictures attempt to illustrate. The top left hand one um, is a screenshot of the Learning Hub landing page, which is on our Moodle site. 
left is a screenshot of one of the Padlet boards. If you can make out any of the posts there, um, they're talking in Zoom to, uh, as, as a, together. Another is a video guide that was posted to you. Um, there's a link to a virtual staff room drop in. This was early days, and these posts reflected the points made during the And the final one is the top of the Mahara page. It was our pilot page. The early conversations were all around Zoom, so we decided that for our very first bulletin. Let's have a look at the page in a little bit more detail. The, the layout was chosen by um, Kate, um, a newspaper, so it had a banner headline. That just included a reminder of the professional learning hub, what it was about. And then the three columns were an attempt or length of the page and mimic a newspaper or bulletin. You can see at the top uh, there, there's a PDF entry for a trade, um, so bringing in our ILT team as well. Introduction to a podcast, so we had a recording of two teachers' experiences of using Zoom to teach. Um, um, oh, the, explain that bit in a minute because that link was part of my problem. Then there are three links to websites with summaries of why they We also had a question and answer area, um, links to other training activities, detailed teaching, support, a comment box for the feedback. Um, and this pilot document was set up and a group link for ALPs and TLCs to access the text of editing or contributing to future files, pages accessible the opportunity to then pull those to create a uh, archive this pilot page was shared these and their course groups and the coaches we asked for feedback none of it was positive it focused on mainly though things like start formatting layout um, do some minor editing um, on the order and visibility and we've got a couple more snaps of it. Um, I use the Google Apps area to embed the pod down through. Um, it just seemed the simplest way to work with that file. The different contact areas. Early on about how to keep people in Zoom rooms, how to do, uh, take care of safe. So we try to capture all that on the page. The page. We had the comment box reminding and, and looking for um, further suggestions. So the idea was that it was encouraging joint activities, that it was um, there was sharing, it was trying to create this community of support. However, the problem. I had three problems really um, in, when I was the first was technical and it set me back for a while as my carefully constructed is appearing into a single scrolling page. I'm not a technician, my pedagogy more, so um, it took me a while to resolve. I had to take the sound link out of the text box and put it in its own area so they were dislocated. The second of all was that by the time we managed to that moving We'd lost the momentum from the professional learning hub. Edwin's or everybody was moving more into a settled distance learning that relied less on the hub. People were doing less experimentation. And the, page, the first page would be more widely distributed. And, um, and we tried to encourage it, but it wasn't massively. So the prognosis. I had to ask myself, was Mahara the wrong platform or at the wrong time? We had a lot with special interest groups that emerged face to face. Even though it was all being done through Zoom, I needed more of a personal connection. That isolation, you don't want to read in isolation when you're sharing and work in a community came down to analyze it I asked myself did I have a did I have a community was that the practice um, 
thing which was there actually stuff that we were ignoring going on for participation were the people looking without actually that we weren't, weren't perhaps taking into account so um, I think possibly um, the right tool but the wrong give it enough time and the community we were trying to reach was and perhaps it might work with smaller communities like the special interest because it, it fits the model for a much better um, but that, that those were the problems so I'm happy to pick up any questions Thank you, Louise. Um, there are a few comments. Um, I don't know if anyone's got any questions they want to put to Louise for us. Technicians um, watching. <laughs> Problem why my page is ex um, it seems to have stayed with the Google Apps link out of the text. Do you still have um, a link to that page that you could share, Louise? Um, I do. I just need to get permissions from how many people contributed to it that I haven't got around everybody. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe it's worth putting it in one of the um, forums on our um, uh, Mahara Hui course and maybe some people could offer some advice. Absolutely, that would be great. Thank you. OK, oh, Teresa asks, did you get any feedback from your users? Um, the only feedback we had, as I say, the um, style and format, it's not so much on, that was great, can we have more podcasts looking for, it was, um, could you make different colour? So it's all visual rather than the actual process? Content, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it was an interesting learning curve. Um, I realized it. I still think that there is something there to use it's just an assessment role, um, but it, it needs to be, you say, um, as you, um, I think it's Teresa said, it's a community, and I think perhaps we didn't give it enough time. Yeah, um, there was um, a great moment in one of Mary Cooch's um, presentations last week at the Moodle Moot where she said, you know, for, for it to happen, you have to you know engage with your learners first so i don't know maybe, yeah maybe on that forum post people can sort of help you with the technical stuff and maybe drop in some other ideas yeah that would be great thank you okay time spent experimenting is never wasted totally agree teresa thank you okay well thank you very much louise um and the applause really lovely to hear from you again um I will now pass 